guys. All right, we left off last time with chapter 15, where I had asked you the question what you would do if somebody treated you the way that Mike and Crash treated Penn, and where they squirted the mustard into his shoes, and Penn kind of just, you know, put his foot in and didn't really say anything. Um, and I had some really interesting uh, comments about that. Some of you said you wouldn't act like they did anything either. Others said they would tell. Other people said they'd get revenge. Um, so we had lots of different answers and different ways to handle it. So let's see what happens with Penn today. <clears throat> On the way home, we talked about it. I couldn't believe it, I said. It looks like she likes him, said Mike. I screeched. Likes him? You're crazy. No girl would like that old burger. Mike grinned. You're just jealous because you like her. I laughed. Me? You're crazier than crazy. Why would I like that stuck-up girl? I laughed some more. As usual, we ordered pizza from my house. My mother told me that from now on I had to ask Abby if she wanted pizza too. As usual, she was in the backyard. She wanted some, so I ordered two mediums to cover the three of us, both with pepperoni. When they came, Abby took three slices and started picking out the pepperonis. What are you doing? I asked. She was stacking up the pepperonis like quarters on her plate. I'm a vegetarian. Since when? Mike sneered. Since she started hanging out with little Miss Webb. She looked at me all snotty. I do not devour anything that has a face. She's even starting to sound like him, Mike blubbered with his mouth full. She's getting weirder by the minute. I never saw a pepperoni with a face, I said. What do you think? There's little herds of pepperonis running around the ranch? No, said Mike. They're not ranch animals. They're wild. You go hunting for them in the woods. I jumped in, but only during pepperoni hunting season. Right, or else you'll be a pepperoni poacher. We cracked up. Mike made like a rifleman. You gotta get him with a first shot. Right, I howled, because there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded bull pepperoni. Bang, went Mike. By now, we were rolling on the floor. Abby glared down at us. And after you shoot the wild pepperoni, I sputtered, we eat them. I reached up to my sister's plate, grabbed a stack of pepperoni slices, and shoved them into my mouth, like this. Abby got up. You're disgusting. She took her plate outside. A couple of minutes later, we were eating our pizza in peace when Mike suddenly looked past me and said, What's that? What? I said. He pointed. I saw something move. Like, go behind the refrigerator. I looked, it's probably a bug. I just hope it wasn't a roach. We went back to eating, and ten seconds later, Mike jumps right out of his seat. Whoa! I whirled around and saw nothing. It ain't no bug, man, unless it's a King Kong bug. All of a sudden, I wasn't hungry. I felt cold. Where'd it go? I said. There. He was pointing to the corner of the kitchen. The wastebasket? Yeah, behind it, I think, or under it. I'll tell you one thing, man. What? My voice wasn't working right. It's fast. I pulled my feet up to the rung of my chair. Mike grabbed the broom. He stalked over toward the wastebasket, holding the broom handle out like a sword. What are you going to do, I said. Flush him out. You sure you want to do that? Yeah. We were whispering. He poked the basket. Nothing happened, except me scrunching up a little tighter. He poked again. Nothing. I think it's gone, I said. He went on poking, and then, with the tip of the broom handle, he shoved the basket away, and out it came. He was right. It was fast. A gray blur across the kitchen floor. And then, then, I was looking down at Abby, way down. Why was she so short? And she was looking straight up at me, her eyes wide, panting, saying, What happened? Huh? What, it, what are you screaming about? Who's screaming? And what are you doing up there? If Mommy knew you were on the kitchen table... I looked at my feet. She was right. I was standing on the kitchen table. How could that be? I heard Mike's voice. A mouse. Abby clapped. Wow, where? Mouse my butt, I said. That was a rat. I lowered myself to the edge of this I lowered myself to the seat on the edge of the table. My feet stayed off the floor. Mike held his fingers a couple of inches apart. It was a mouse. Abby sneered. Big brave brother Crash Colgan is afraid of mice. I could have killed her. Not afraid. Don't like. I just don't like them. There is a difference. Nobody was listening. Abby was all over Mike. So, come on, where to go? Mike nodded toward the dining room. In there. Abby was through the door, quicker than the rodent. Chapter 17
She was still searching when Mike left. She didn't stop until my father came home. As he closed the door behind him, she mouthed silently, silently to me, Don't tell. There's a rodent loose in the house, I told him. Might even be a rat. Abby drew her ugliest face at me. It's a mouse. My father frowned. Just what I need. You saw it? Yeah, it was in the kitchen. It ran in here somewhere. He looked around as if he thought he was going to come out and take a bow. Abby ran up the stairs. He let out a long breath. Well, tell your mother to get a trap. Better get more than one, I said. He nodded. The front door opened. My mother was home. She heard my father say we have a mouse. She sagged just like he had when we told him. I noticed that sag a lot. It almost always happens when they come home from work. I'll say something, or Abby will, and then sag. It's a total major sag. Cheeks, shoulders, even voice, except the eyeballs, they roll up. It's like they've just barely made it through the day, and then finally they get home, and one little word from us, sometimes it's just a question like, do you want to know, do you know where my frisbee is? And bam, they're crushed. Sag city. Sometimes I wish I could turn the day upside down so that the main time at home would be in the morning before they get all worn out. I'll tell you, at the end of the day, it doesn't take much to crush a parent. My mother sighed. Get a trap. Me, said my father. You're the male. You're supposed to be the hunter. She sagged toward the kitchen. She stopped. She pointed down at my football laundry bag. No. No what, I said. She was still looking and pointing down. You know what? All last year, you kept leaving that smelly thing here. It's not going to happen again this year. Not even once. Pick it up. Get it out of here. I guess I didn't move fast enough. Now. All right. I snatched it up. Thank you, she said, and dragged herself off. I followed my dad into his office. It's a little more. It's a little room in the back of the house. Sometimes he goes right on working half the night. Remember that kid Schultz, I said, I told you about? Said he was going to bust me. He took stuff from his briefcase. Did he? I sneered. Ha! We had a fight before practice even started. They had to pull us apart. And? And I got him good later. We were running some drills, and twice I plowed him into the ground. I was awesome. He looked up. He laughed. He reached out and mushed my hair. Back to my crash. I kind of felt like sticking around, but I figured I'd better not press my luck. I backed on out. Can't wait for the first game, I said. October 8th. Go get him, Crasher, he said. He was rooting in his desk. I lugged my football bag upstairs. Our upper hallway is different from most people's. It's like an art gallery. My mother used to be a painter. Some of her paintings are hanging in the walls between the bedrooms. One of the paintings is me. You never know it because I was less than a year old when she did it. I'm lying on my stomach with a diaper on, looking up with this toothless grin, probably thinking, probably already thinking what I was going to do when I got my first football helmet. It's a stupid picture, actually. Sometimes like that should be kept, so, some things like that should be kept private. Everybody who sees it laughs. I usually don't even look at it, but this time I did. On the glass that covered it, some mysterious unknown person had crammed a mustache right above my toothless grin. I put spit on my finger and rubbed it off. All right, so that refers back to the picture, although in, in, here is kind of the kid facing up where he said he was, as a baby, he was laying on his tummy, uh, but somebody had penciled it in. So maybe take a guess on who that is. All right, that's all for today. I will see you later. Have a good day.